Well, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm excited uh, about talking about the new Canada Food Guide. Um, there's some great changes with this new food guide. So I've got quite a bit to uh, cover today. Um, so hopefully we'll get through this half hour. Um, so, and from this presentation, I'm, ho I'm hoping that you'll learn how to incorporate the principles into your own life as well for the, with the new recommendations. Um, so there's our outline for the presentation today. Some things to note with the new food guide, it was adapted um, on some of the principles on the food guides from Brazil, Sweden, and Belgium. They've had quite good success with their guides. And you can see them online if you are curious about um, their food guides. They have them in English too. And the new guide is more interactive, mobile friendly, um, to uh, keep up with today's times. And there's lots of recipes and tips, so I do invite everybody to go to the website to uh, check that out. Um, so why the food guide matters, um, it's integrated into a lot of our nutrition policies, our programs, we use it a lot in our health care centers, hospitals. It's taught in schools, promoted by health professionals like dietitians, physicians and nurses. Um, and it can influence uh, the food served and sold, uh, it, uh, sold in Canada's public institutions from daycares uh, to long-term care facilities, um, as well as help Canadians choose healthier foods. So we've had quite a few re revisions of the food guide um, throughout the years. It's kind of interesting to note how um, the food guides have been developed over the years and why they started. Um, the, the first uh, guide, or rules as they called it, was um, uh, in 1938. And they had essential nu nutrients that they wanted Canadians to try to get in their diet. Um, Soon after this, though, uh, they began, began the food rationing um, because of the war. Um, and uh, there were a lot of Canadians that were malnourished, especially the ones who were poorer. So in 1942, they developed the official food rules and they created the six food groups. So they had the milk, fruit, vegetables, cereals, breads, plus meat, fish, and eggs. And 1944, um, they asked Canadians, they did another revision and asked Canadians to, get, to consume more milk and that was um, mainly a, a large portion of that, the rationale for that was for riboflavin, the B12 in milk. They took out the kidney and heart recommendations to eat kidney and heart, but they left the liver uh, recommendation because of the nutrient characteristics in liver. And then 1961, they replaced the guide with the rules, or they, sorry, replaced the rules with the guide. Um, and then in 1982, we started seeing messages to reduce fat, sugar, salt, and alcohol. And 1992, they created the rainbow to illustrate having more vegetables and fruits in your diet. And then 2007, we saw quite a few changes. We had the food guide for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. And then they had the guide in 10 different languages to um, uh, recognize uh, the multicultural components of uh, Canada and our population in Canada. So um, this is the new guide, if you haven't seen it already, and we've got um, copies here for everybody um, to uh, use. So the main principles of the guide is, uh, are to improve health, meet nutrient needs, and reduce the risk of nutrition-related chronic disease. And the revisions for this latest guide were based on a multi-year project. And there are, this guide is a part of a broader strategy, a healthy eating strategy by Health Canada, and I'll touch on that uh, at the end of the presentation. So it is for the general uh, public, it's for policymakers and uh, health professionals, and um, it's based on a lot of evidence uh, there that are linked to foods, nutrients, and health, and it's got the Canadian context too. So if you look at other guides from across the world, um, you have to base this um, food recommendations on our Canadian uh, food supply. And then the current status of Canadians and sort of the food trends um, is what the guide is based on. And then they use existing dietary guidance. So it is based on high quality, peer reviewed, systematic reviews and uh, reports from leading scientific organizations and government agencies were used in the development of this new guide. And they have all that information online too um, to look at. So um, 
What we're currently seeing is phase one of the food guide. Um, phase two um, will include um, Canadians' healthy eating patterns and recommendations for healthy eating patterns. So we'll see more specific guidance on the recommendation amounts and types of food, as well as the life stage uh, guidance for different age groups and for pregnancy. I think they were waiting for the federal election before they moved into stage two. So hopefully we will see it by the end of 2019. So industry commission reports were excluded, extensive and targeted consultations were held to ensure uh, resources were evidence-based, useful and relevant to Canadian scientific academics, health professionals, regulatory bodies, indigenous experts and national indigenous organizations, provincial and territorial governments and Canadians um, were included in the uh, development of this guide and not industry. So that's um, a different factor with this new guide. So, the food guide is just a snapshot uh, and just the tip of the iceberg for what you'll find online. So it, like I mentioned before, it's a mobile friendly, well there we go, thank you. It's a mobile friendly website. Um, you, you can find meal planning, budget, cooking, healthy eating um, uh, guidance at, when you, you visit the online suite. Um, so the healthy eating recommendations are here and uh, accessing the guide online. We'll, you can link, if you click on the recommendations, it'll link you to more information uh, for trying to incorpor those, incorporate those healthy eating guidelines. And that's more of what you see when you click on the links. This is mindful eating. Um, and then the development of the guide, this is just the process that they went through, the evidence review and um, the evidence uh, for the guidelines is there too, and that's all online to take a look at. So phase one, what we saw with phase one, um, consumer friendly, mm -hmm. online, easily accessible, and then it includes the foundational messages for Canadians two and older. And with their stakeholder consultation, consultations, they had over 20,000 people uh, as a part of that consultation. So phase two, as I mentioned, we should see this later in 2019, but that can be used for meal planning and the life stages. And then the main message, we've had this message before, eat well, live well, is their main message. Eat a variety of healthy foods each day, which has been a part of their main messages before. Have plenty of vegetables and fruit, eat protein foods, make water your drink of choice, that's a new message, and choose whole grain foods. So this is a difference with this new guide. We used to have, have at least half your plate as whole grains. Now they just say have whole grain foods because Canadians aren't getting enough whole grain foods in their diet. And then healthy eating is more than just the foods you eat, so you'll see that difference with this new guide. To be more mindful of your eating habits, cook more often, enjoy your food, what, what a message, but enjoying your food. Sit down and have meals together, use the food labels, limit foods high in sodium, sugars, and saturated fat, and be aware of food marketing. So that's another new message um, with this new guide. And the Brazilian population used some of these principles too. As I mentioned, they had some great success with those messages to be aware of consumer marketing because they do play a big factor in how people eat. People may not realize what a factor that they play um, in their eating habits, but they do. And the marketing companies know that they do play a big um, role in what you choose. Um, so this is just more basis for the foundational messages that you can see online and it's used this can be used for policymakers and health professionals. Um, and uh, more on the scientific articles that they reviewed is in this document too. So um, one, the section one has um, the foundational messages for healthy eating to eat more vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and protein. Increase the intake of plant-based protein foods. Replace uh, saturated fats with unsaturated fats. And then water should be your drink of choice. So they had, they used convincing findings to support um, the basis of these recommendations. Um, probable, possible, and insufficient findings um, from all reports included in the evidence review were also considered during the policy development process. So it really was an extensive review. And then section two, food and beverages that undermine healthy eating. Um, so foods high in sodium, uh, foods with free sugars, 
And free sugars are sugars that are monounsaturated disaccharides added to food and beverages by the manufacturer um, or when cooking. Um, and sugars naturally found in honey, syrups, uh, fruit juices, and fruit juice concentrate. But free sugars um, do not include the naturally occurring sources of sugar found in intact and cut fruit and vegetables and unsweetened milk. So lactose and milk would be an example. Beverages that contain free sugars, including 100% juice, um, have been associated with higher risk of dental decay in children. So that was one of the rationales for taking uh, juice out of this new guide. And then intake of food and beverages with added sugars have been associated with increased risk of weight gain, overweight and obesity, and type 2 diabetes. So in 2015, sugary drinks, sugars, syrups, preserves, confectionaries, desserts um, were uh, a main source of total sugars in the Canadian in Canadian diet. So to help reduce the intake of free sugars, the majority of total sugar should come from nutritious foods such as intact or cut fruit and vegetables and unsweetened um, milk. And then more of an emphasis on the unsaturated fats. They always had this, but they're emphasizing it more to have those healthier fats. So your olive, soybean, flax seeds, sunflower, peanut, safflower, canola, ses sesame oils would be healthier. And then an emphasis on our food environment um, being changing with the more processed foods, so they wanted more of an emphasis and awareness for Canadians to reduce processed foods. And then section three, the importance of food skills. So this is a, a newer component too of the guide um, because they're finding a lot of people don't know how to cook foods and prepare foods. We sort of lost that skill. Um, so this is a big recommendation with the new guide. So knowledge uh, needed to read, evaluate, and interpret nutrition information on the food and menu labels, marketing of food and beverages, um, how to store food and prepare food safely, adjust recipes, grow food, hunt or fish, and then um, to know where to find plants and berries to harvest, or some of the emphasis here. And those planning skills to be able to plan a meal, and food literacy, um, so how we learn how to prepare our meals. So, and then promoting the family supports um, for those food skills uh, are really in, incorporated into this new guide. So, creating opportunities to cook and prepare foods through school-based initiatives would be an example, and other community-based programs outside the school setting can support children and adolescents to develop and apply food skills so they have them for a lifetime. And then finally, section four, uh, implementation of the guidelines, trying to reduce barriers, creating those healthy environments, especially in our government uh, buildings, publicly, funding, pu publicly funded buildings, um, to have food policies that support the new recommendations so people have easy access to healthy foods. Um, and creating those supportive environments are really key to that. So, uh, really looking at public sectors to implement these. So schools, workplaces, rec centers, and healthcare facilities really can play a big influence and a positive influence on uh, Canadians being able to use these new dietary uh, guidelines. So um, the new guide really has an emphasis on where when, why, and how you eat, as opposed to just what you eat, and enjoying your meal, uh, sitting down with others, um, and taking time for your meals is a big emphasis, um, because we're just finding a lot of Canadians aren't. They're eating on the go, they're eating in their cars, um, they're not sitting down at the table and having meals, they're not eating together with other people, and it does uh, impact how well we eat um, when we're not uh, doing those positive eating habits. And then if you go to the website, there's a lot of videos. So this video, I won't play it today, but uh, it's an example of how a family, they put away their um, cell phones and they don't have a TV on and they're all helping with the meal prep. They all have a role to play, but they're sitting down as a family and interacting as a family and making that time for having a family meal. And a quick, simple video is just to reemphasize those points. Um, so some of the foundational messages here, eat plenty of vegetables and fruits, whole grain foods and protein foods. And I like that they've included the quarter plate with protein foods because protein is really important and I don't think 
Sometimes people may not realize how important it is, especially for seniors. We've had a big emphasis on malnutrition in seniors and getting the protein in your diet. So making sure that a quarter of your plate does have protein, lean proteins, unprocessed proteins, um, you know, that are healthier proteins too, and then trying to incorporate more of those plant-based proteins are part of the message that, as well with the new guide. So diet, a diet rich in vegetables and fruits can reduce heart disease, stroke, and some cancers. Um, but a lot of Canadians aren't getting enough. Seven out of 10 children age four to 12, and over half of adults, about 59%, eat fewer than five servings of vegetables and fruits each day. And men in particular um, really don't get enough vegetables and fruits in their diet. Men are about 33% as less likely than women, women at 47% to consume five servings of vegetables and fruits per day. So men uh, really need to start trying to get that half their plate of vegetables and fruits. So whole grains are really important as well. So the emphasis here, eating foods uh, that are whole grains are higher in fiber, which help reduce your risk of stroke, colon cancer, heart disease, and type two diabetes. And then, um, as I mentioned, the protein foods, choosing those plant-based ones more often. So just examples of whole grain foods, uh, whole wheat pasta, and uh, your pitas and tortillas or things, brown rice, to try to incorporate oatmeal uh, would be good choices to try to get those whole, gra whole grain foods. And then your protein foods, uh, nuts, seeds, nut butters, beans, peas, lentils, tofu, fortified soy beverage and other soy products, fish, shellfish, eggs, lean meats and poultry, and then milk, yogurt, cheese, and other dairy products are incorporated in this new guide as the protein foods. So there's a difference there too. And they're really emphasizing unsweetened uh, yogurts, unsweetened milk, um, and lower fat cheeses uh, with this new food guide. And uh, just some of the messages that you'll see reducing your processed meats, the sausage, the deli meats, um, and having fresher meats um, would be better um, health-wise. And so where's the milk? So it is in the protein foods. It still is important though, and we wanna make sure that we have enough calcium in our diet. Um, so at, with Alberta Health Services, we do still recommend having two cups of milk or two cups of soy milk uh, to get that calcium in your diet. Um, and then choosing the unsweetened milks would be appropriate or pl unsweetened plant-based um, beverages. So just to note, soy would be a good source of protein and milk is naturally a good source of protein, but some of our plant-based beverages don't have the protein in them. And you'll see that if you look at um, the label. So um, your almond beverage, you would think that it would be a good source of protein because it's almonds, but it's not. So that's something to be careful about, especially for children and seniors because protein is important for them. Usually adults get enough protein through their diet, but um, young children and seniors um, are at higher risk for not getting enough protein. So just be cautious of that if you're using those. And then to know to um, make sure they're not regulated uh, as well. So they may not have the vitamin D in, in the product. They may not have the calcium too. So reading the labels to make sure that they are fortified with vitamin D and calcium is important. And then you can go to the calcium calculator just to find out if you are getting enough calcium in your diet. The Osteoporosis Society has a, um, a calcium calculator on their website um, to see if you are getting, usually adults, 1,000 to 1,300 milligrams of calcium a day is what they need and that will be on the calcium calculator as well. So just an example too of your plant-based beverages. These are just ones that um, I had picked up off the shelf just to show you um, they may not have a lot of protein or vitamin D or calcium, so just be careful about that. So look for something with at least six grams of protein and 30% of your daily value for calcium and vitamin D. And then on the website too, you can find a lot of information on include including um, more of those plant-based uh, protein foods too and recipes. And then where we want to switch, switch the Canadian diet from, typically, you know, we see this as a typical meal. Um, a lot of us are eating out in restaurants and we want to see the shift from these kinds of foods to more of this. So simple. Um, um, but uh, still can be delicious though too. So being consumers too, you know, ask for these types of foods and I think um, 
the food providers will start to get the message if we ask for these kinds of foods. Okay, I, I'll get to that when we do the Q&A after lunch. Thanks. Um, so other messages, make water your drink of choice, choose foods with healthy fats and limit processed foods, as I mentioned. Um, and then the highly processed foods would be sugary drinks, deep fried foods, cookies and cake, processed meats, chocolate and candy, sweetened, bever sweetened breakfast cereals, and ready to heat packaged meal dishes, which seem to be taking over a large portion of Canadians' uh, foods. And then juice, just a little bit of information on the juice. Um, it was limited in the old guide, um, but now they're not recommending it at all. And then using food labels, so you can click on the website to find out more about how to read food labels. And then some of our Alberta Health Services resources for uh, label reading the healthy way, you can find on our healthyeatingstartshere.ca website. And then to be aware of food marketing. Um, we did have Bill S228 um, that was introduced um, federally for uh, child health protection. The bill never did go through, but it was a bill intended um, to stop marketing um, unhealthy food and beverages to children 13 years and younger. But it still is a really important bill that I hope that they do um, get um, passed federally. Uh, Quebec has had restrictions on marketing to children for quite a long time and uh, it's beyond just food in Quebec but they've had great success with restricting marketing to children in Quebec and if you look at their stats they do eat healthier they have more vegetables and fruits in Quebec and I'm I'm not sure if anyone's correlated the two but um, um, they have evidence to support that restricting marketing does um, research support so that it does have an impact on children and marketing with children using, you know, these devices, um, their, their marketers are really getting this information out to our children. Um, if you go on to the guide, they do have links to how to protect your privacy, and that's on the new guide too. So um, if you click on there, uh, it'll show you how to protect your own privacy so you don't have these messages coming up because they trace where you go. And somehow they seem to know your age too, and the marketing is targeted. They're very tricky. It's very elaborate. Um, so this is what you'll see if you go to the website, um, Healthy Eating Anywhere. So they've got different settings to give you some guidance to support your healthy eating. And then information on healthy food environments. So the social and physical environments that are important, accessibility to healthy foods, the marketing of healthy foods. We don't seem to have as much money to market healthy foods as the unhealthy foods do. Um, yeah. Nutrition information is a part of that too. So um, just to ensure um, we have the right environments to support healthy eating. And this is a toolkit. There's a lot of resources on our Alberta Health Services website, again, too, for creating healthy environments, for vending machines, promoting healthy products, uh, the four Ps. So if you go to the website, there's a lot of tools and resources to look at. And then more videos, too, how to build a healthy plate. If you click on here, they've got examples for breakfast, snacks, and meals. And they have different age groups, too. Um, to uh, help create simple. I like that they've just kept it simple and doable too um, when you see their examples. And resources, lots of resources. So you can order the food guide online, you can order a poster, and they have images to use too. Um, and then um, they are looking at, um, I'm not sure what they're gonna do with this too. It'll probably come out in stage two. Uh, but currently we still have um, the food guide for First Nations, Inuit and Métis. Um, it still can be used um, to support indigenous people. Uh, the development of distinctions between healthy eating tools is underway. And that's the information right now. And then you can subscribe to get monthly updates on the new food guide. Um, they have a section here to go to. It'll look like this, sign up now, and you just click on that, and then you'll get the emails um, for uh, getting their updates on the new guide. And they're constantly changing the uh, online resources too. When I go there, there's always something new on the website. 
And then, as I mentioned before, the food guide revision is just part of a one component of Canada's health eating strategy. Um, so one component I did talk about was protecting vulnerable populations, uh, the marketing to children, uh, restrictions of marketing unhealthy food and beverages as part of that healthy eating strategy. So they are still striving to get that component through. Um, improving food quality, so they've already eliminated trans fat from our food, which is a great success. New York actually had a policy on um, restricting trans fat added to food, and they saw a significant reduction in strokes and heart disease from that restriction of trans fat. So it's great. And Canada tried to um, have a voluntary restriction of trans fat in the diet, in the food products, um, but it, they had to basically enforce it. it um, they, they tried voluntary, but it didn't have the same impact. We didn't see as many changes, so that you won't find that in your food. And then better nutrition information, so the food labeling, being able to pick out your healthier foods is part of the strategy too, so updating the food nutrition label. And then more of our resources here and the website from Alberta Health Services to get more tools, and this has all been updated. Um, the, a lot of the handouts have been updated with the new food guide recommendations and guidelines. What, what's for lunch is an example. That's been updated. And then our healthy eating is just part of, again, uh, a bigger strategy for Health Canada that includes healthy living and healthy minds. So the healthy living component is tobacco, plain packaging, vaping reg regulations, prohibiting um, methyl in tobacco, physical activity promotion, concussion prevention, and then the healthy mind, mental health promotion, and First Nations and Inuit Hope for Wellness Helpline is a part of that strategy. And uh, yeah, more information here. There's the web link to go to the food guide. And then our information, if you do want to talk to an Alberta Health Services dietitian, you can call 811. It's a free service. And then we have a new website, ahs.ca slash nutrition, and that will show you nutrition services and dietitian services um, all across the province, including um, the cell zone. And that's what that website looks like. And a lot of people don't know that they can see a dietitian for free. So they are a great resource here, and we're fortunate to have some good dietitians to see. And then questions. Okay, thanks. <laughs>